much. Thank you. A call, Tracy Martin. Kia ora, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I stand on behalf of New Zealand First to provide our conditional support for this bill to the next phase of the health. Conditional support, sir. We note that one of the purposes of this bill is to improve compliance and to encourage personal responsibility and allow loan repayments. And Mr Goldsmith, New Zealand First, is a party that believes in personal responsibility. And as a previous credit controller whose working life was in the pursuit of those who were avoiding debt, I also understand some of the necessities of this bill. But today, sir, we are talking about student debt. Students who are those young New Zealanders who we all in this House agree are the future of this nation, those young New Zealanders who we consistently send a message to that you must seek higher education, they must prepare them, I beg your pardon for the word, using the word you, they must seek higher education, they must prepare not only for their own financial future through recognitions, um, recognition of their achieved skill levels, um, and that can be via university or a unitech. So we as a society send this message again and again and again. Go and get some higher education. And when they take our advice, we charge them for it. We give them a debt. But ultimately, sir, this bill, the purpose of this bill and its amendments is to lower the levels of student debt and to encourage repayment of student loans. Now, we note that there are several administrative clauses, such as the recommended insertion of Clause 30B, which would amend Schedule 1. We would like to draw the attention of the House to the fact that this requirement had originally been included in the Student Loan Scheme Act 1992, but it got admitted from the Student Loan Scheme 2011 through an oversight. We would respectfully suggest that this is what happens when legislation is rushed through the House to meet a predetermined, predescribed, political, politically comfortable date, as opposed to the goal being good legislation that then does not need to come back into this House a second or a third time for an amendment. However, Mr Speaker, New Zealand First sees the logic of the provision for a New Zealand-based contact person for borrowers, um, and we are sure that there will be many a mum and a dad or any other contact person out there that will be breathing a sigh of relief to read that by becoming that New Zealand-based contact person, they will bear no liability for the loan repayments, although we are unclear as to the enforcement that might be suggested if they choose not to provide borrowers' current contact details. But there are two points that New Zealand First would like to bring to the attention of this House. We take this opportunity to remind the House that since the tertiary education fees were introduced in 1989, student debt has, as has been mentioned, spiralled out of control. Latest figures, $12.07 billion, affecting 621,000 New Zealanders. And New Zealand First advocates that not only are some of these amendments required to tighten a bill rushed through in 2011, but that it is actually time for a change of direction around some of the tools used in student debt reduction. I sit on the Education and Science Select Committee, sir, and I have heard from NIWA, the Ministry of Research and Innovation and Ag Research. Each of them have explained to that committee about the need to encourage more studies in science so that this nation can move forward with greater economic development and the need for the retention and return of those graduates to this nation and those industries. We hear the same in the area of medicine and education. But rather than trying to pick winner and loser industries, which history has, has taught us is very dangerous, New Zealand First believes that the authors of this bill should consider the inclusion of the New Zealand's first dollar-for-dollar dollar student debt write-off scheme for those graduates who remain and work in New Zealand. If we recognise that those who participate in such a scheme will be working and paying taxes in New Zealand, all taxes, not just PAYE, but GST on every purchase, FPT if they happen to get a good job with some perks, and res resident withholding tax if they manage to save some money, and by removing some of the administrative costs on pursuing debt collection, because people like me are quite expensive when we seek out debt, 
that if we take some of those administrative costs away, that it is possible, sir, that this scheme may well, to coin a phrase from the national government, it may well become fiscally neutral. We do want to draw the second point that we want to um, draw the House's attention to, and it's already be actually been mentioned by our Labour and Green colleagues, um, and it is the it is Part 1, Clause 107B, Part 3A, and we see this as a serious flaw in this amendment bill. This part refers to the ability of an individual to access repayment holidays, and from our reading, and I'm pleased to see that it has been picked up by others, it restricts payment holidays, and I quote the bill. A borrower reaches the borrower's limit if the borrower has had one or more repayment holidays granted under this Act for a period of 365 days or for periods that total 365 days. Now, we note in the commentary at the front of the bill that the committee considered how this might affect second chance learners and women. And for some reason, that is not mentioned in the commentary there, although there is a paternalistic comment towards the end about protecting people from themselves, um, this access has been restricted. Now, it is worth pointing out, sir, that this is not suggesting that a borrower can take a repayment holiday and another repayment holiday. These are people who have already paid off their loan. They're the very people we want to encourage to use the system. It's exactly what the government is trying to do, get people to repay the loan. So they have already proved themselves to be a reliable creditor. Um, and, it, and they've taken advantage of the repayment holiday for the period then they complete the contract, and that contract was between themselves and the state in that moment. I don't know of any other contractual law where you go in to borrow money, once you've paid it back, you've proved yourself to be a good creditor, that suddenly somebody says, oh, but we're going to rem remove something now from you. So they have achieved what was asked of them. They've upskilled themselves, and they've repaid their financial debt to the nation. And I ask the House to consider this clause again with particular attention, and I draw its attention to the reality of what this means in women's lives. Now, young women, it is very, very likely, it is a reality of our world, that a young woman will go to tertiary education, and as we heard already, 58% of the people we're talking about here are women. They will, she will go to a tertiary education, she will seek a higher qualification using the student loan scheme. Um, and just as with her male counterparts, she will then, if there's any jobs, go out and actually find herself a job and repay her loan during that scheme. She might take a loan holiday, let's say on the birth of her first child, just while she and her family readjust. It doesn't mean she's not working, but it may mean that she wants to take that 365 days while they get over the birth of their first child, resuss out their, um, their financial priorities, reset their budgets and move on. Now, Later on in life, as a more mature woman I can speak to this, later on in life, after we've looked after our families and fed our husbands and our children have grown up a bit, we might like to upskill a bit more. That means we might need to go and actually re-access the, the student loan scheme. Unfortunately, if my husband leaves me, if my husband leaves me and I now need another 365 days to figure out how the children and I are going to live and just readjust our financial circumstances, I don't get a repayment holiday. And I don't think that that has actually the reality of these circumstances has been considered by that committee. And I would ask that they be considered before we come to committee stage. So just to close, Mr Speaker, New Zealand First um, will be supporting this bill, but it will be conditional, and I must repeat conditional, on that some of these issues, possibly we could have discussion on these issues prior to the next level. Thank you. I call David Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, so that's a very interesting speech from New Zealand First, which um, talks about um, debt spiralling out of control, and yet at the same time they want to give extended repayment holidays and they want to bring in a one-for-one -one debt write-off ratio. And the things.